Praise the Lord, and welcome to the Bible Speaks broadcast. I'm Reverend Michael Jakes of Bethesda Church of God in Christ in Brooklyn, New York. Our prayer as we put these programs together is that you might be encouraged and that you might grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So won't you join us now as we open up the Word of God, which is able to save your souls. May God bless you. Sometimes all you can do is just praise God. Even when you don't know what to say, you know, the Bible says that 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 sometimes that we just have to we, we don't know what to say, that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us with, with groanings that cannot be uttered. Sometimes you don't know what to say. Sometimes you just have to moan. Sometimes you just have to groan. Sometimes you just don't know what to say. But I thank God that He has given us the privilege to be able to come into His throne room. Thank God that He's able, he, He's given us an opportunity to be able to come to Him and praise and prayer. The Bible says that he is touched by the feelings of our infirmity. He knows what we're going through. He understands what we're, what, what, what's happening with us and he is there for us. I thank him. We should thank him that he is there for us at all times. Amen? Amen. 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 Anybody here has any problems? Amen. Any problems? Anything yes. that, that, that is weighing down heavy on you? Yes. Anything that is, that, is, that is touching your soul? Yes. That is touching your spirit? We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He understands, and he, we can go to him. The Bible says we can come boldly to his throne. Boldly. Don't come timid. Don't come uh, reluctantly. The Bible says we ought to come boldly to the throne of grace to receive grace and mercy in time of what? In time of need. In time of need. So if you need something, if you need something for your soul, if you need something for your spirit, need something for your mind, we can go to the Lord always in prayer. He is there for us. Praise the Lord. 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 We're not in the this morning, are we? No. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I am in the book of Acts, the book of, sorry, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Starting out in verse number 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 10. It starts out, to whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it, in the person of Christ. In verse 11, let Satan to get advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. We're talking about this, this morning, starving the devil. Starving the devil. It's necessary that we starve the devil. Don't give him anything to eat. You know, he feeds off of our behavior. Satan feeds off of our thoughts. He feeds off of our attitudes. He feeds off of our actions. He feeds off of our words. And we should not give him anything to feed on. It doesn't take much. See, the Bible says that if you give him just a, a foothold, just a foothold is just that little secure place. A little place that he can that he can plant in his foot, so to speak, and, and get comfortable there, that he can set up ground. If he gets a foothold in your life, if he gets a foothold in your mind, that foothold will become a stronghold. A stronghold is when Satan just takes all of his gear and he just leaves it there. It's a fortress. It's a fortress. It's a strong place. And the Bible says that we ought not allow him to get a foothold. When he gets that foothold, he'll make a stronghold. We need to starve the devil out. Starve him out. Don't give him anything at all to beat him. This verse says that Satan should get advantage of us. Who's the us? Who is Paul speaking to here? He is speaking to fellow Christians. He is speaking to other born-again Christians just like he is. Telling us, and it tells me that Satan, no matter who, who we think we are, no matter who uh, we are in Christ, and we are powerful in Christ, but it tells us that if we are not on our guard, Satan is able, he is able to get advantage of us. How 
does he get advantage over us? In here, it says, through unforgiveness. If I don't forgive folk when they do something wrong to me, I will give Satan an advantage. Anybody here ever been somebody done wrong to them? Said something wrong, done something wrong. And we, we know how it feels to, to, to be betrayed. We know how it feels to be abandoned, all these things. The Bible says that if we do not want Satan to get advantage of us, to take advantage of us, that we need to forgive. We need to forgive. You see, because when we don't forgive, it brings bitterness. Bitterness. And when we get bitter, our hearts become hardened. You see, the Bible says that bitterness, that a root, a root of bitterness. A root of bitterness is able to spring up. And once the root of bitterness springs up, it's able to, to infect everyone else around you. Just the root. You see, what you do and what you say, we say that I'm not bothering anyone. We say that I'm just keeping it to myself. This is just my thing. But when it becomes, when what is inflicting you, when what is in your spirit, when what Satan is trying to accomplish in your life, because Satan is trying to accomplish some things in your life, but Satan is trying to accomplish in your life, and, and when other people do you wrong, when you begin to get bitter, bitter, that's holding a grudge, and it's even deeper than holding a grudge. When you begin to get bitter, you see, the Bible says that would have been the springs up. It springs up, and it it doesn't just affect, it defiles folks around. It defiles them. And they can also become bitter. Bitter. I, I, I tell the story of how when we were in another church years ago, and things were going on in the church, it, it was a split in the church, and everyone basically was taking sides. Some folk in the church were, were on this side. They wanted this person to take over after the pastor died. And a, another sect of the church wanted this uh, faction to take over the church. And everybody basically took sides. It was a horrible, horrible situation. But they took sides. But, but, when things began to get rough, and I myself also by myself, Taking sides. And since I was on the inside, sort of on the inside of things that were going on in the church, I saw some things that I didn't agree with. And because I saw these things I didn't agree with, it, it, it began to make me angry. And people started talking to me. You see, other people who were already bitter, other people who already were angry, already, other people who were already in a state of unforgiveness began to whisper. And I thought I didn't have a side. I thought I was staying neutral. I was trying to stay neutral, if you could. And they kept whispering in my ear. And as they whispered their little grievances, and as they whispered their little bitternesses to me, I began to listen. And I gave it an ear. And I began to become bitter myself. So you see, bitterness will take root in someone else's life and they will spread it on to somebody else. Don't give ear to someone else's business because it will affect you. It will touch you. You see, so there are some things that Satan, if we are not careful, he can get advantage over us. Take advantage. Nobody wants to say that somebody took advantage of them. It's a sign of weakness. It's a sign of not being alert. It's a sign of not being aware. No one wants to say, they took advantage of me. But this is what happens. When we don't give our all, when we are not uh, careful, Satan is able to take advantage of us. It says in the second part of that verse, for we are not ignorant of his devices. We want to always be aware don't just say, I'm strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. And that's true. We are strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. But we cannot take that statement 
and then say, because I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, I will never fall. I will never do that. I will never say that. I will never go there. That will never happen to me. We can't take, we can't take our, our boasting in the Lord and then take it in and say, I will never do that because, because Satan doesn't need much to work on. He doesn't need much. He doesn't need much. It's just your thought. Your thought. And he can feed on your thought. No, he doesn't know your thoughts. But when you give legs to your thought, when you begin to act out what is in your mind that is not of God, then he will grasp on and he will begin, he will begin to take advantage of us. We need to starve the devil. Starve him. Don't give him an inch. Don't give him an inch. You know, there was an episode of this old TV show that I used to watch, that's not on anymore, uh, The Honey Mourners, and, and, and there was an episode where, where the landlord decided that he would kick out his tenants who were not paying the rent. And how did he get them out? He, he took away their light, he turned off the gas, he turned off the heat, but they would not give in. They would not give in. They wouldn't give in. And, and, and finally, he said, when they were out in the streets, out in the streets, him and his wife, he thought that he had overcome. He says, that's true. He says, he owns the house. He took away our lights. He took away our gas. He took away our heat. But he doesn't own the streets. He can't throw us out of the streets. You see, we need to stop him out. Stop him out. He's going to try. He's going to try. You see, when it comes to saying, we need to take some things. There's certain things that we need to do. There's certain things that actually that we need to take. If it's someone, if it's a person, if it's a thought, if it's an action, if it's a place, there's certain things that we ought not to put ourselves into. Certain situations that we can avoid. Sometimes there are certain people that we need to avoid in order to maintain our walk with the Lord. Certain people we just need to stay away from, if at all possible. Because sin, let me tell you something about sin. Sin will take its toll on you. Unforgiven sin, unchecked sin in your life will take its toll on you. I've seen family members, I've seen friends that I knew from years ago that used to be nice, upstanding citizens. And now, because of sin in the life, sin will touch your mind. If you let it go and check, sin will touch your mind. It will touch your heart. It will touch your spirit. It will take the light of God out of your life. Sin, 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 sin. It will ravage and do not say that because I am a child of God, that sin will not take a toll on me. Sin can take a toll on the life of a Christian. If that Christian becomes hardened by the, as the Bible calls, the deceitfulness of sin. Sin is deceitful. We let things slide. We, we allow ourselves to get away with some things. We, we, we don't check ourselves. And when we see a problem, we're not quick to get a hold of it. And we let things pass. And we let things go by. But we need to allow the Holy Spirit. You see, when we, when we starve the devil, we feed our own spirit. Every time we starve the devil, we feed our spirit. Every time we starve the devil, we, we, we become encouraged. And we grow more and more in the Lord when we stomp the devil out. You see, the devil is relentless. He is relentless. You see, to relent is to ease up and to, 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 to back up a little bit. We need to be without relenting. We need to be relentless. He is relentless. He is not going to stop. He is not going to easily stop. So we need to be relentless in our walk. We need to say, I will not break. I will not bow. I will not bend. We must, I must, you must be relentless in your pursuit of God. Relentless, you must be. If you don't have that mindset that I 
shall overcome. If you don't have that mindset, you will be plenty in the enemy's hands. Plenty in the enemy's hands. We must learn how to stand up and starve the devil. Starve him out. Starve him out. We always say here, and I always say, that we need to stomp on the devil. Stomp. Literally, sometimes you have to just stomp on the devil. Just stomp on the devil. Because he will, if you're not careful, he will come and he will try to take the record. He'll try to take your life away. Did anybody ever hear and thought that they were going to die? Just not from anything physical. Not from anything physical. I'm talking about from spiritual things. Spiritual difficulties. Feeling down. Feeling low. And sometimes you just felt like you were going to die. But God is always there. God is always there. God is always in the midst. The Bible says that he will never, never, ever leave us nor forsake us. We don't want to deprive God of anything that belongs to him. He deserves all the praise. That's the song we were just singing. All the praise. All the praise belongs to God. And what is it that Satan has been craving from the very beginning? What is it? Satan has wanted praise from the beginning. He has wanted glory from the beginning. He has wanted honor from the beginning. He has wanted power from the beginning. He wanted to set up his throne above God's throne. He wanted all of this from the beginning. It got him kicked out of heaven. And now he goes to and fro on the earth, wreaking havoc and trying to get into the lives of God's people. That's what he does. And he wants, and every time we bow, every time we sin, every time we bow to sin and beg to sin, and we break, we give Satan just a little more. We give Satan just a little bit more territory. We need to take back that territory. See, it says here in verse number 14, Now, thanks be unto God. Thank be unto God. Always, always, not sometimes, not every now and then, not just a little, always, he always causes us to triumph, victory, victory. I don't know if you are hearing me this morning. I really don't know if you're hearing me this morning. It says, always causes us to triumph. He always causes us to be victorious. Always. I thank God for that. I thank God. I thank God that when I think I'm down, and when and, and, and when Satan tells me I'm down, and when my spirit tells me that I'm down, and when my mind tells me that I'm down, when my mind and my heart and my soul tells me that I'm lost, when all these things are swirling around me and swirling inside of me, my word says right here that he causes me always, always to have victory, always. Victory belongs to you. Victory. Victory. It's there. It's there. It's there. And that's a reason to shout. That's a reason to shout. That's a reason to praise his name. Because victory belongs to us. He always calls us to triumph in Christ. In Christ. I cannot back down. I cannot give in. We must continue to fight. Continue to walk in the way of the Lord. If we do not, Satan, Satan will pick us off. Pick us off. One by one. And he'll do it slowly. He'll do it slowly. He'll take his time. He'll take his time. And he'll stand back and he'll watch. And he'll watch. And he'll observe. And he'll see. We allow these little things. We allow little things to come in and grab a hold of us. Little things come in and they begin to take advantage of us. The situations that happen in our life, the things that people do to us, the situations that rise up, whatever it is, they take a hold of our mind. And our mind begins to swirl. And our mind begins to wonder. And this is how Satan begins to take advantage of us when we give rise and we give credence to the thoughts and the actions that Satan is trying to to bring out of us. You see, the, the one who is not the child of God has no, has no 
has no weapons against us. But we, as children of God, you see, we can't stop the devil from flying around our head. You know how it goes? You can't stop him flying around your head, but you don't have to let him make a nest in your head. He can swirl, he can fly, but he doesn't have to sit there. And when we sit and we think and we wonder how it would be if I did this and what if I said this and all these different things, Satan begins, begins to take advantage of us. Attitudes, thoughts, actions, he begins to take shape in our life. And he wants your praise. He wants you to do what he wants you to do. And every time, every time that you give any kind of credence to what he has said, he has an opportunity to get that foothold that we've been talking about. He has an opportunity to set up that stronghold, that thing in our life that we feel that we can't live without. A stronghold, a stronghold. But the enemy is great, but our God is greater. Our God is greater. We serve a mighty God that is able to heal. We serve a mighty God that is able to deliver. We serve a mighty God that is able to set free. No matter what is going on in your life, no matter what is happening in your life, no matter what the enemy has told you, no matter what the devil is telling you, remember, he's a liar. Liar. You can't trust a liar. Does anybody here know anyone who's a liar? You know a person who is a liar? That, that, that you've caught in a lie? That you've heard them lying to someone else? And when they come and talk to you, and, and over the years you know the person, and you just know, and you just can't, they're talking, and you just know in your head, I'm not listening to this. I can't believe what they say. Because they lie. They lie to me. They lie to others. This is Satan. He lies. And it sounds good. You ever know someone who comes to you with, with, with a reason why they can't, or a reason, a, a reason, and it's always a good reason, and it sounds good, but it's an excuse. It's a lie. That's what Satan does. Lies. He's the father of lies. And when we allow ourselves to begin to listen to what the enemy says, he can take advantage of us. We need to starve the devil. There was an episode of in Star Trek, another TV show, Star Trek, there was some, there was some mysterious force, some entity that had gotten into the spaceship. And it was going around. It was pretty much invisible. And it was going around the ship. And it caused the people on the ship to get angry at each other. And as the people began to get angry at each other, at the little things that this force was, was allowing to happen, was making happen, the people and this entity, entity became more powerful. It became more powerful until they realized that their actions, their actions against one another were cause, was causing uh, this entity to get more powerful. And then they began simply to smile and to laugh and to tell jokes and to uh, uh, hug one another. And when they began to do that, this entity, this force that was feeding off their negative behavior weakened and it died off. As I say this, he's that negative, that so-called negative force that feeds off of our negative behavior. And when we allow our negative behavior to be uh, uh, manifested, that negative force, that who is Satan, who is more than a force, he gets stronger and stronger the more that we uh, allow our negative side to be manifest. What we need to do, we need to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We need to do more than smile and laugh. As they did on that show, we need to do more than that. We need to continue to pray. We need to continue to read His Word. We need to continue to be and do and, and do what God has called us to do. When we find ourselves in God's will, obey God. This is how this entity who is Satan will be weakened in our life. But we must be obedient. Stop the devil out. Don't give him. 
give him an inch. Starve him out. Starve him out. Starve the devil this morning. Don't give him room to move. He doesn't need that much room. We need to trust God. Trust God. Give your situation. Give it all over to God. If you're in need of power this morning, that power is available. Through the Lord, that power is available. Through His Spirit, that power is available. Starve the devil and feed your spirit this morning. Starve the devil and feed your spirit by your heavenly peace. Power yes. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. Lord, we thank you that your power is available to us, Lord Jesus. Lord, we want to starve the devil out of our lives, Lord Jesus. As we starve the devil, we will feed our spirit. Lord, it will bring encouragement, Lord Jesus. It will turn discouragement into encouragement, Lord Jesus. Lord, we want you to have your way in our lives, Lord Jesus. Lord, we know that you are touched by the feelings of our infirmities, Lord Jesus. Lord, we want you to have your way, Lord Jesus. Lord, we know that you are there with us. Lord, you are there for us, Lord Jesus. Lord, be all that you want to be in our lives as we allow you to work in our lives. Lord, work in us. Lord, work through us, Lord Jesus. Lord, we give all of our situations. Lord, we give all of our problems. Lord, we give everything over to you this morning. Lord, we want to start the devil out. Start him out, Lord Jesus. And we want to allow you to come in and do whatever it is that you need to do. Do whatever repair work you need to do in our lives, Lord Jesus. Lord, touch our mind. Lord, touch our thoughts. Lord, touch the things that we even do. Lord, touch us, Lord Jesus, that we might be found doing your will at all times as we continue to praise your name. When we praise your name, we'll begin, when we begin to give you glory, we will start the devil out and feed our own spirit. Lord, have your way in our